Good morning, President Boudreaux, Provost Liss, Congressman Lewis, Mr. Plotkin, faculty and staff, honored guests, friends and family, and a special welcome to the class of 2019! <laughs> Graduates, we are here today not only because of the last four or five or more years that we spent here at City, but because of a lifetime of hard work and an unfaltering determination to succeed. We have pulled all-nighters, pounded countless Red Bulls, and stressed over exams. But we made it, and we made it together. Congratulations. Look around you. We are the color and fabric of the true, diverse America. <laughs> and what is diversity? Often, this is a word that gets thrown around, a quota of people who look a certain way or come from a certain background. But what does diversity truly mean? Malcolm Forbes, publisher of the Forbes magazine, defines diversity as the art of thinking independently together. As a Chinese American, I felt like I really fit in in the schools that I attended growing up, ones that were mostly filled with Asian Americans. <laughs> but the closest that we got to diversity seemed to be, what part of China is your family from? So if diversity is the art of thinking independently together, that independence must come from a difference of thought. And it was only here at City College that I've been truly exposed to diversity, and as a result, have different and better values than I did four years ago. Allow me to explain. I'm sure all of us are familiar with the Asian stereotype, and the fact that I am standing up here looking the way I do <laughs> I'm sure I'm not doing much to dispel these stereotypes. They say Asians are short, that we look like we're 12, and we're good at math. So check, check, and check. So OK, I get it. While I don't condone the use of stereotypes, I understand that they must come from somewhere. And parts of my life felt like they really fit in into the stereotype at times. When I brought home 95s and 96s on my exams, my dad asked me, <laughs> who'd you give those extra points to? And I felt like only half of him was kidding. <laughs> like many of my classmates, I took as many AP classes as my schedule could fit. I got straight A's and great SAT scores. But I'm sure all of us know by now, there are so many bigger lessons to learn in school than how to get straight A's. And those are lessons that I learned right here at City College. Because here at City College, for the first time in my life, someone congratulated me for not getting an A in a class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because according to the professor who said it, perfection is boring. <laughs> and here at City College, I have learned as much from the students to my left and to my right as from the professor in the front of the room. From meeting students with a diversity of experience, people from almost every single continent, people who are the first in their families to attend and graduate from college, first generation Americans and immigrants, mothers and fathers returning to finish their higher education, full-time students and full-time workers, I have learned more than I could ever learn from any textbook. From this diversity of thought and experience that I was exposed to, I learned about a diversity of issues that I didn't really know about before. Last year, after what I thought to be a particularly good lecture, one of my classmates pointed out to me that in a PowerPoint, with slides of pictures of doctors, few of the faces were female. And not one of those faces was brown or black. 
And this shocked me, not only because of the lack of diversity and representation, but also because I had failed to notice it until it was pointed out to me. We all know the impact of seeing people in power and leadership who look like us. And I realized then that I had to become a more vigilant advocate for issues, even if they do not directly impact me. This one experience was just the tip of the iceberg of issues that I learned more about during my four years here at City College. I felt like I'd been living in a bubble all my life. And here, I was confronted with so many different realities, ones that I had the privilege of ignoring before. But I have learned that lack of direct involvement does not absolve you of responsibility. And you have learned this too through thought-provoking seminars, conversations with your friends, involvement in student groups like Kappa Sig, Circle K, Engineers Without Borders. Any time that you fought for a cause, you were advocating for someone else. So the first commitment that I ask you to make when you leave City College is to continue to advocate for inclusion and equity. Now, I said equity and not equality. So what is the difference? Imagine person A and person B. Person A is six feet tall, that must be nice. Person B is four feet tall, and they're both trying to peer over a fence to watch a baseball game. So equality means giving person A and person B the same size box to stand on so that they are both closer to watching the baseball game. But equity means giving person B a taller box than person A, so that both person A and person B end up at the same vantage point. <laughs> so recognize that not everybody starts from the same place, and not everybody needs the same help. Recognize this difference and do something about it. Now I mentioned earlier that we all come from different backgrounds. But what I think unites us is that we are all only here because of sacrifices that have been made. There is a Chinese saying, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. So while we should all get to planting trees, lucky for us, our trees were also planted 20 years ago. If your family moved to America, and struggle to learn a new language, they were planting your tree. If they worked multiple jobs to save up to pay for your college tuition, they were planting that tree. And maybe you yourself had to take a couple semesters off to afford being a student, and that was you planting your own tree. My tree was planted by my parents and grandparents all the way from China. So what I would love for you to do is, on the count of three, I would love for you to shout where your tree was planted. It could be another country, another part of America, or even a street right here in New York City, OK? So yell out on the count of three. One, <laughs> two, three. Isn't it amazing that all of those different roots converged right here at City College? I stand here today not only representing myself or the class of 2019, but also humbly representing the generations of women and men who came before us, who did not have the opportunities that we have today. My mother was one such person. She struggled with two jobs along with night school when she was my age. My dad, sorry. <laughs> my dad started waiting tables starting from when he was only 14 to help support his family. And my grandma only got to a second grade education in China because at an early age, her mother decided that as a girl, her education was not as important as her brother's. 
And as she worked in repair shops and clothing factories, despite being in male-dominated fields, she became the best at what she did. And all throughout, she would repeat over and over the poems and idioms that she learned in second grade because she so valued and wanted to retain what little education she received. Mama, okay, hey son. That's my grandma right there. <laughs> My grandma is 93 years old. <laughs> and she could still recite to you those same poems today. When my grandma falls ill and I call her to check up on her, she always tells me to get back to studying instead of worrying about her. <laughs> because to her, the most important thing is that I receive the education that she did not. And <laughs> I'm so proud that I will become my, doc my family's first doctor. <laughs> the granddaughter of a woman who only got to second grade. So in times when you feel like you're not good enough, or smart enough, or hardworking enough, remember that you come from previous generations who were enough. The second commitment that I ask you to make is to honor the sacrifices that you and previous generations have made for us. And how lucky are we that we at CCNY, with all its great faculty and staff, have made this possible for us. So before I conclude, I need to thank a few people. Mom, thank you for being my best friend and for showing me what selflessness looks like. You are the glue that holds our family together and you have taught me that knowledge is the one thing that nobody can take from me. <laughs> Baba my other best friend. <laughs> Thank you for encouraging me to never settle for less than my very best. But no, I'm not sorry for giving away those few points. <laughs> <laughs> to my Goko, my older brother Kevin, thank you for always challenging me <laughs> and for supporting me. To my grandma, thank you for coming to hear me speak at graduation. I'm so proud to be your granddaughter and will always treasure the stories that you have told me. So my grandma doesn't speak English, so give me one minute, please. <laughs> Mama, to my Thank you to my friends, both the ones who are here and also the ones watching on live stream. <laughs> Thank you for being in my life and for having faith in me even when I did not. Also, shout out to my fellow admissions ambassadors, wherever you are in the crowd. <laughs> All right, there's only a few, I guess. <laughs> to my mentors here at City College, Dean Danny Macbeth, Dr. Holly Atkinson, Dr. Ernest Patty, Dr. Amir Solomon, I'm almost done, one second. Dr. Joan Dorn, Dr. Rose Kalix, Dr. Nancy Soler, Ms. Margaret Ambrosino, Ms. Joy Richards, Mr. Guillermo Rivera, thank you for always going to bat for students like me. And most of all, thank you to the class of 2019 for giving me the honor of learning beside you. I want to leave you with one last message. 
So much has changed since we were freshmen in 2015. In 2015, our school mascot was Benny the Beaver. Our president was Barack Obama. <laughs> And we still had so much hope for how season eight of Game of Thrones would end. <laughs> and now, in 2019, we have Rocky the Raccoon. Yeah! <laughs> Donald Trump. And <laughs> I would need another hour to talk about how disappointed I am in Game of Thrones. <laughs> But I still have so much hope for the future. Because starting today, class of 2019, it's our turn. <laughs> it's such a cliche to say this, but I truly cannot wait to see what we do and how we grow. So the final commitment that I ask you to make today is to plant a tree for future generations to come. Congratulations to the class of 2019. We did it!